Before we get any further, this video contains spoilers for the first two episodes of Ahsoka. If you haven't seen them yet, we highly recommend you head on over to Disney Plus and watch them before continuing with the video. If you're all caught up or just don't care, let's dive right in. Episode 2 was full of some amazing callbacks like Sabine cutting her hair exactly the way Kanan cut his in Rebels or Chopper and Hera's perfect tag team action. However, in just two episodes, Ahsoka has managed to introduce a new element that was completely unexpected, Sabine being Ahsoka's Padawan. Given how Ahsoka left the Jedi, many fans probably thought she would never take on a student of her own. Yet, here we are, and it's interesting to see that her struggles and methods as a teacher really reflect her struggles as a Padawan under Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at what learning under Anakin must have been like for her, then contrast it to how it sounds like her time as a master went with Sabine. Attention, Sergeant on deck! There's no doubt that training under Anakin was tough, even if you ignore the fact that it was in the middle of a bloody civil war. Anakin was well known for being a bit extreme at times. He was the work hard, play hard kind of guy, and when it came to training this Padawan, that translated into a combination of easy banter and brutal training. Fans who've seen Tales of the Jedi remember the episode dedicated to Anakin training Ahsoka. In the episode, he wants to improve her precognition and reflexes when dealing with blaster fire, and to do so, he has the 501st encircle her and shoot to stun. Over and over and over. No matter how hard he was on her, he never stopped pushing her until she succeeded. Even in the field, he trusted her to carry out mission critical objectives without him, or to lead units of clones on the battlefield despite how young she was, and she definitely picked up his penchant for unconventional solutions. Overall, this training method worked well. Ahsoka is undeniably very skilled and competent as a fighter. Where Anakin's training was less effective, however, was in dealing with emotions and difficult situations. In the beginning, Ahsoka was only 14, and she showed it. She was overconfident, disrespectful, and overall acted as if she knew better than people much older and experienced than her. Yet, for over one season, Anakin did little to correct this. Sure, she'd get scolded, but it was a stern word and not a proper lecture. She matured, but it wasn't because her master set her straight, but because the consequences of her choices taught her a hard lesson. On the other extreme, Anakin would become furious with her and express that anger without properly verbalizing what she should have done instead of making the mistake she'd made. To put it bluntly, Anakin wasn't the best at navigating emotional or philosophical conversations. While there were definitely times he stepped up to fill the role of a proper mentor, he struggled to put feelings into words or to clearly explain the philosophy behind something. Add to that how he was, in many ways, a terrible example, and you have the foundation for a master Padawan connection that was dysfunctional in a specific but critical way. Even when it counted the most, when Ahsoka was accused of treason, Anakin struggled to convey his feelings to her. He struggled to reassure her or to talk to the other Jedi. After she stepped away, he didn't express his pain or regret. In many ways, the two were too similar, stubborn, opinionated, and sometimes quick to react. The problem with that is that being a Jedi is a deeply philosophical calling. It's not enough to be good in battle, but a Jedi needs to understand their teachings in order to be able to follow them. Plo Koon, who was Ahsoka's early teacher, was far more suited to guiding Ahsoka spiritually and his influence on her beliefs can be felt throughout the Clone Wars. Anakin wasn't nearly as good at having those heartfelt conversations, and when things are left unsaid, they fester and turn septic. Looking at her relationship with Sabine, as it's been discussed in the first two episodes, it's like watching history repeat itself. Before we get into their relationship as Master and Padawan, we feel the need to address the banter in the room. Since when was Sabine force sensitive? And it's a valid question. Ahsoka threw this at us with seemingly no warning, but there were always signs Sabine had a small gift. Namely, Sabine has always seemed to know things she shouldn't. If we look back to the final season of Rebels, she was able to intuit how to open the temple to the world between worlds when experts had failed for months. 
In the same arc, she was with Ezra when they opened the temple, and it had been well established that you need two force sensitives to do that. At other times, she seemed to be aware of people coming, even when she wouldn't have been able to see or hear them. In short, Sabine might not have been able to use telekinesis or the art of movement, but her force abilities manifest in intuition. Given how Hu Young goes out of his way to let us know her abilities are very, very weak, we're satisfied with the overall explanation. Similarly, the two clashing make sense from a character perspective. Again in Rebels, Kanan had to teach Sabine how to wield the Darksaber, and it went poorly. Sabine is a Mandalorian, as Hera reminds us. She's incredibly stubborn, hot-headed, and doesn't like sitting around. Continuously repeated drills aren't her strong suit, much less when she's being constantly reminded that she doesn't really have the talent for it. If we had to guess, we would say that Sabine was an impatient student, willing to learn but unhappy with the slow progress of it and with the knowledge that she would never become good at it. That would have definitely hurt her pride, and from what we've seen of her in the past, she doesn't take that well. Not to mention, Sabine is headstrong and competent enough. That's a bit of a callback to how Ahsoka was in the first few seasons, and we're sure she spent a good amount of time disobeying orders, much like she stole the map from Ahsoka in Episode 1. Ahsoka, on the other hand, takes after Anakin a lot more than she might want to realise. The events of the Clone Wars, the Rebellion, and making peace with the fact that her master became Darth Vader have clearly left scars on her. Gone is the fun-loving Padawan many grew to love. In The Mandalorian, she seems wise and grounded, but in Ahsoka, we start to see the truth. She struggles. Much like Anakin before her, she finds it difficult to talk about emotions and have those hard conversations, and it affects her relationship with her student. Because Sabine is no better. May we reiterate, she is Mandalorian, and talking about their feels is really not what they're known for. But as we said earlier, when things are left unsaid, they fester and turn septic, and that's what happened here. Our guess is that Ahsoka had certain expectations she either failed to communicate or failed to guide Sabine toward, and that resulted in her giving up and stepping away. On Sabine's part, she expresses that while, yes, she's difficult, she thought that's what made them good together. To put it in easy terms, Ahsoka tried adopting a rebellious teenager and realized she didn't have the patience to deal with her. That's more a reflection of her failure than Sabine, and it seems they're both aware that the fault mainly lies with the master. Hopefully, with the guidance of someone like Hera, Ahsoka can learn to be more open and actually address her concerns with her student, but only time will tell. For us, it was an unexpected addition to the story, and it's still too early to tell if it's a good or bad one. We're excited to keep watching though, and to see how things develop between them in their side quest to find Thrawn. But what do you think? Do you agree Ahsoka is channeling some of Anakin's worst qualities, or are we reaching? Do you agree with the decision to make Sabine even slightly force sensitive, or was that a bad call? What do you think of the show's premiere so far? Let us know all that and more in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.